Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel, and this is Getting to Blinky 5.0, where we're going to be associating the schematic symbols with the footprints. So today what we're doing is we're actually tying the symbolic representation that we talked about with the schematic to the actual real world. What does the copper look like? What are the, how, do we, how are we going to create pads to solder things down to? And that's something we're going to do in the future. We're going to actually solder all this stuff together. But in order to do this, we need to define that if, you know, if we have a square that represents, or you know, a cube that represents a component we want to put on the board, it's got two pads, we need to have two copper pads that we can actually solder to in a very, very simple example. And in this case, we need to associate the two-pin uh, component that we have in the schematic with these two pads that exist in the real world. So rather than me making more hand gestures here, let's just go and look at what this looks like here. So we started here with the schematic, and uh, this is a, you know we have the battery and the 555. We made this uh, custom symbol here as well, and all of these other two port components here. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do show you two different methods on how to do this today. And it's gotten a little bit better on the second method, but we're going to show you the first method here. This is called CVPCB, or just the association between schematic and components, and footprints, rather. And what we see here is we have, on the left side, this is a little non-intuitive, I think, and the menu always seems to open up weird. But on the left side here, we have all of the different libraries that we have available. These are footprint libraries. And if we want to go and see all of the footprint libraries we have available, we can go and click this, and we see here's the location of all of them. These actually come from here. This is actually what you downloaded as part of KiCad. These are all available. It's all open source. It's all in GitHub. Uh, these are libraries that are come custom with, uh, with, with KiCad, right? You see the dot pretty extension here. Let me make it a little bigger. So the dot pretty extension is how we determine that it is a library, a footprint library itself. I'm not a huge fan of the extension itself, but who cares, right? It's just really it's just a folder that within this then it just actually contains the KiCad mod, which is the footprint itself. I do like that it's a set of it's basically folders with individual footprint files, and then you can move them around as you need, which is really really I I, I like quite a bit. Okay, so. We'll go over this in the next video as well because we're going to make a new library. We're going to, we're going to insert it into our design. But for now, we have a bunch, and, and the library has gotten so good. Let me just say real quick, the KiCad librarians have been doing such a great amount of work here where you can honestly find a lot of different parts in here that you wouldn't have been able to find before. There's also a footprint generator, which as you get more and more advanced, you might need to use that for like, say, a 256 pin BGA part. You wouldn't want to make that by hand. You might want to just use the generator. So like I said, it's gotten so much better on all of these things, especially in KiCad 5.0. So big props to the uh, to the development team and the librarians. Thank you to all of them. OK, so let's go back here. We're going to just do an association here. So what we want to do is uh, we need to associate the let's just pick r1 which is a resistor and we're going to use 0805 resistors now like i said in that first video that's a 0 0.08 inches by 0 0.05 inches that's the size of the component itself so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to resistors and smd and you see on the right side now that all of these showed up now if you don't see anything over here, there's a bunch of filters that happen up here. If you want to see everything that's available, you click this. It's I, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily because it uh, basically when you turn this off, it loads every footprint in everything. By L, it's basically doing uh, fil filtering by library now, right? You see, this is actually every library showing up here from battery to button switch to all the way down to resistors. We actually want to filter by library, which means when we select the thing on the left here, it's only showing what's in that library. So this is the mo mode that I normally do. You can also do by number of pins. That's the pound sign here. And I think this is just a keyword, yeah. So like, it would have to say resistor in here and resistor for the footprint. I'm not a huge fan of that one. Anyway, so now we see all of the resistors that are available in the default resistor SMD library. And in doing that, we want to go and pick one. And we're going to pick 0805. We could do the hand solder. Yeah, let's do the hand solder. So what that means is that's going to be just a slightly larger pad for when we're soldering. And since some of you were probably getting started with uh, surface mount soldering, which we are going to do here, which is not scary. Uh, then uh, we're going to use that. So what I do is double click, and you see it associates here. And so I'm going to do that for all of the uh, the resistors here. OK, great. Now if I want to go and find, uh, and for the, the 7555, right, we can go back to here. This is the data sheet. And we can go and see, OK, well, what are the actual footprints that are available for our, uh, our part here? There's two, pen there's two types of things that are available. There's DIP8 and SO8. So we're going to actually pick the SO8. And so we need to go to package, SO. And then within here, you see there's package SO, and then there's the name of the actual footprint itself. So we're going to scroll down a little bit here, MSOP, 
SO, whatever, SOIC8. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to choose one of these. Now, it looks like these have gotten really, really complicated here. And they have definitely, the, the names have gotten longer in the newer thing. But let me tell you, this has gotten so much better. Because what we can do is just from looking at the name now, we can see, OK, this one has a uh, ex external pad, or EP, I forget what that exactly is. But then it's the dimensions. And let me tell you, the dimensions are super, super important. So we can go and look at this pad over here, rather, or sorry, the, the size of this part. And just by looking at the size of this part, we can verify it with the uh, with the actual footprint that we're using. And this is something where I've gotten tripped up many, many times before. So let's see, we want to do D is the one dimension by, uh, what's this dimension? E, D by E. So D is 4.8 millimeters by 3.8 millimeters. And that's the minimum. So it's going to be somewhere from 4 to 5 or 3.8 to 4.8. So let's see what we can find here. So we're going to do SO8. 3.9, 4.9, that looks good, right? So that's basically in, in that same size that we're showing here, right? 3.9 is kind of in between. 3.8 to 4.0 is, is the, is the min-max, so the, the uh, in between that would be 3.9 to 4.9. So now we know that that's right. And let's see what this actually looks like. So we can also look at the, uh, we can see what it looks like if we look at the preview here as well. And so we have the entire size, and we have an actual, we have the EP, which is that center pad, which we don't actually need. So we can we can choose not to use that one. So one EP. Ah, here we go. So this is the one without the, the EP, the lower pad here. Let's take a look at that. So that's actually what we want here. So 4.9 to 3.9. All right, great. So we'll double click that. That'll get associated here. And that's great. And I'm just going to hit uh, save and exit. Right? We, if we wanted to stay in here, if we just wanted to save it, we could just save it and stay in here. But I'm going to hit OK. That's going to take us back to the schematic itself. All right, so like I said, that was the CV PCB up here, right? This is the, the way to get to that, is in the toolbar up here. I'm, I'm not sure any other way. Uh, probably up in here as well, you can get to it in the tools menu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so assigned footprints is the one there. Now, this is that was one way to do it. The other way that has gotten a lot better is if we mouse over and hit E on any of these packages or any of these parts here, we can actually see that the footprint is listed in here, right? And what we can do is if we wanted to change it, we click it. And then we hit this little library symbol on the far right of it. And that takes us right back to a similar dialog. I find myself using this more and more, uh, especially when I'm getting at the beginning of a design, because what you'll see is that I'll add one part, right? So let's go in and add, uh, let's see, I create a, foot per, or a schematic symbol for a capacitor, right? A point one, or one microfarad capacitor. I go in here, I go to capacitor, SMD. There's a bunch of uh, large, large parts here. But we want to do the same thing, 0805 hand solder. Double click. You see it gets assigned here. Hit OK. And see, what I'll usually do is when I'm doing this, I'll do that on the first part. And then every time I copy this and use it again, the footprint is already associated. And I really like that because I can just assign the footprint once the size that I know I'm going to be using and then be ready to go. I believe I also need to do this for the LED. And again. We can just hit L, I think. Yep, LED, SMD. And then same thing, we can do uh, hand solder. This one's going to have a slightly different, it's going to have the silk screen's going to be different. We'll explain that later. And then finally, the battery. We're going to actually leave the battery because that's actually the topic of the next. We're going to make our own custom footprint there uh, for something that, uh, you know, sometimes you have to do that. It looks like we have an errant no connect there. OK, so basically at this point now, we have we can go back in and see all of the things that we've associated. It's loading up the, the footprints here. You see that we have all of our footprints assigned except for battery 1. And uh, we can actually check this when we say, uh, sorry, when we hit, if we hit F8, it loads up this dialog now. It says, uh, this is basically before you go, so this is something we're going to actually use a lot more when we get into the actual uh, layout as well. But basically, this is the, it's checking to say, hey, have all your footprints been assigned? And in this one, obviously, it says, no, hey, you haven't had it assigned there. And so it, you could do it. You could actually pull all your footprints in now. We're not going to do that yet. But this is a good way to check, have you actually updated your footprint? So that's F8 in here. Uh, there's all, that's also available, I believe, in Tools. And then Update PCB from Schematic. So that's another way you can do that. So um, this is how we actually assigned the physical footprints to these, the symbolic 
representations of the symbol or of the uh, of the components rather in the schematic, and hopefully that stuff all pieced together well for you. Uh, like I said, this is going to be just the kind of the next step in the process. What we're going to do next is actually create our own custom footprint for the battery holder, and uh, and that's a really important thing as well. I think to to learn how to use how to use the footprint generator uh, because you're not always going to find all the footprints. I, I know that when people are getting started, especially in uh, in in a lot of uh, layout programs, you kind of just hope that you can find the library. And a lot, like I said, a lot of the, the footprints have gotten so much better in KiCad. You can use the footprints that you that are in the default libraries. But I think it's really worthwhile to spend the time to learn to build your own footprint because once you run into that, you don't have to learn it at that point. You want to learn it up front. So that's all for now. If you have any questions, you can always go over to the forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. This is part of a larger course. If you want to learn more about electronics in general, contextualelectronics.com is the way to do that. And uh, we run courses all year long and whenever you want to want to sign up for those. Uh, we'll have more videos coming out soon and we'll be getting to Blinky real quickly. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.